गुड मॉर्निंग सर या गुड मॉर्निंग दिलप्रीत यस सर सो आई एस एफ कॉलेज ऑफ फार्मेसी इज नाउ प्रिपेयरिंग अ डायलॉग सीरीज फॉर एक्सपर्ट टॉक एंड वी हैव सर्च वेरियस एक्सपर्ट्स इन द फील्ड एंड वी हैव नाउ एक्सपर्ट डॉक्टर गौतम सिंह वी सर गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग गुड मॉर्निंग दिलप्रीत so sir actually our principal sir is busy in some meeting and uh, they will join soon so uh, sir i have uh, given you some brief introduction about you before starting the presentation so dr gautam singh ji is working as an associate professor in department of pharmacy bispilani he obtained his phd from bispilani he has ex- uh, he has num- numerous number of industrial research experience academic teaching and research experience in various pharmaceutical technologies He is a, a world two percent top scientist in 2021 and 2022. He is passionate about practicing the newer teaching pedagogy in the classroom teaching as well as motivating students uh, in the new era. So, without taking much time, sir, uh, should we start the presentation, sir? Yes, please. I can. So, it's okay. Thank you very much, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Dilpreet, and uh, thank you, ISF uh, Moga College, uh, giving this opportunity to interact with uh, various uh, researchers, students, and industrialists. And uh, this is my, like we can say, uh, ek, uh, I, I'm privileged to be here and uh, sharing my thoughts over the uh, key aspects on the digitalization methodology. And I'm sure that the topic would be useful for the upcoming researcher. and especially those who are in higher degree and phd they will realize the significance of digitalization methodology in their research okay so with that uh, i'm going to share my slide please let me know if there is any glitch in from that okay. my slides are visible yes sir your slides is completely visible sir okay and this is moving also right yes it is moving it is moving sir okay thank you so i am starting with this um, the digitalization methodology or i can say in vitro release test it's a, a significance uh, it's a one of the significant test or a quality control tool for any kind of pharmaceutical product development without digitalization it is very difficult to ensure the product is having the intended quality or not So that's why, especially solid doses forms, even certain kind of the complex doses forms, dissolution became an integral part of their product development. So here we are going to discuss certain key aspects about the dissolution during the product development. So I'm sure at the end of this session, we'll able to know what is the significance of dissolution testing. development of digitalization methodology like uh, i ensure that yes after this uh, student or especially the researcher can define how to initiate the digitalization method development for their design formulations and also how to utilize uh, the digital- uh, i welcome you sir uh, our principal uh, sir uh, in the presentation sir okay thank you sir please, please continue please continue welcome sir welcome sir. thank you sir thank you so much uh, okay i'll interrupt you just uh, after this uh, uh, i'll just complete my presentation and then i'll be able to interact with you sure sir okay thank you so much sir thank you so much yeah so from this end of this presentation uh, i'm sure we'll have able to uh, this learning outcomes we'll able to know about the significance of digitalization testing uh we'll come to know how to develop the digitalization methodology and also how to utilize the digitalization data for the interpretation of the data and doses form etc so what exactly is the digitalization is a process which we know from the beginning like when we started the pharmacy digitalization as a formulation development yes it's a process in which digitalization is a substance process in which solid substances solubilize in a given solvent that is what is the mass transfer from the solid surface to the liquid phase so a drug is coming out from the doses form and it is dissolving in the liquid phase that is we say it's a dissolution so dissolution became a integral part as various solid doses form like tablet capsules pellets powder 
the drug has to dissolve once the drug has dissolved and coming to the uh, we can say gastric fluid then only then only it is available for the absorption into the blood so without dissolution of drug the drug is not able to available in the blood circulation hence the rate of dissolution will define the rate of absorption as well as sometime it will also correlate with the onset of action so we have seen sometime the fast dispersible tablet some kind of the liquid solution dispersible tablet so that is playing with the dissolution of the drug and helping into getting the better onset of action so that's why in the today's lecture we are going to discuss what is the significance of dissolution methodology so dissolution or drug release test which are in vitro test that measure the rate and extent of dissolution or release of a drug substance from the drug product which is usually in aqueous medium or we take the solvent system or liquid or dissolution media which is mimicking our in vivo system and further it became an integral part of quality control procedure where we link the drug release from the dosage form to the quality of the product and sometime to the extended of this dissolution we utilize this data to correlate with the in vivo performance of the dosage form so it became a part of the product development it became part of the quality control and it became part of to predict the in vivo fate of the drug so it became from the beginning from the pre formulation to the quality control dissolution became an integral part of the product development so various phases of the product development we can say at the beginning there is a api and excipients are there just to know what is the intrinsic dissolution of a drug in presence of api or when it is unit surface area how the drug is coming out from the its compact mass that is called the intrinsic dissolution of the drug intrinsic it means it is a inherent property of api that will help whether to enhance the dissolution of the drug is required whether solubility is enhancement is required or not that we can reflect from the intrinsic dissolution of the drug then moving forward when we have a pre formulation information or investigating of the pre formulation data we again perform the dissolution rate of the drug the next we will start about the product development definitely dissolution is the uh, role model there without dissolution we cannot say our product especially in the generic product development without developing without developing dissolution methodology without matching the dissolution data of innovator uh, generic formulation with innovator we cannot say our product is mimicking the innovator so whole trials and trials are keep on going to just to match the dissolution of the reference listed product for innovator product further for the optimization of the product various process parameters various formulation composition if we say the tablet we we have the binder concentration disintegration concentration then we have the hardness especially in case of the control release formulation we have the polymers how that control how, how that impact is there on the dissolution that need to be optimized so again dissolution is required for optimization of the formulation during the formulation development and optimization after the optimization of the product again the tablet or the product will go for the quality testing as well as the stability testing so at the different time points of the stability samples like 0 month 3 month 6 month 9 month 12 month 24 month 36 month like based on the regulatory requirement we withdraw the samples from the stability chambers and again check the various specifications dissolution is one of the specification just to check during the stability at various condition as per ICH or USFD whether the drug product still have the same dissolution profile or not so dissolution again become integral part during the tablet stability or product stability further when we have developed the product before going for the bio study or bioclinical testing we check the bio study the data of the dissolution and sometimes we correlate we with the help of convolution or deconvolution method we correlate our dissolution data 
with innovator in vivo data and establish a IV IVC based on that which is like we have the three four composition three four uh, trials or three four strategy we have developed the product development with the three four strategy which strategy is required or which strategy will go for the bio study for the screening of the particular strategy if we have the IV IVC we can screen out of this four formulation one formulation is the best one which has highest probability to reach uh, to meet the bio class with the innovator otherwise there is a more chances of failure so resolution again minimize the chances of failure of the bio study further there is a need of commercialization definitely the resolution is a quality control tool for that it's required for the approval and after the approval during the product is in market and there is a change in the site or there is a SUPEC as per the SUPEC guideline there is a change suppose there is a change in the polymer conservation there is a change in the site of the company there is a change in the bed size there is a change in the type of equipment which are used for the granulation so all these changes regulatory agencies are saying you need to again establish that the after changing product is having the same quality of the product so hence the dissolution is one tool which will reflect that the changes made in the newer formulation is not going to affect the quality of the product hence the the request regulatory agency to provide the approval that after the changes product has intended quality so dissolution became a tool for post approval changes also and the later stage whole product life cycle there is a need to just check the assay and impurity similar way we need to also observe the dissolution data of the formulation so from that we can say beginning of the drug to the product life cycle everywhere there is a significant role of the dissolution so hence dissolution without dissolution method development without checking the in vitro drug release one cannot say that if the product is having the same quality as the innovator or product is a quality product so i'll just summarize here that what is the need of resolution testing what we understood from the beginning yes there is a need the resolution is need, needed for the product development for checking the quality and also for the research and application resolution is required for checking the release uniformity from batch to batch is there any change in the batch to batch quality or not dissolution is one tool which ensure yes there is no change in the batch to batch again it ensures the quality and stability of the product so dissolution become a uh, we can say diagnostic tool kind of thing for the stability it's a marker for the stability further for bioweaver purpose especially in case of bcs class 1 or class 3 or sometimes class 2 also where the industry requires certain kind of bio weaver bio weaver means what no need to do the bio study just based on the in vitro data okay we can find out the bio weaver getting bio weaver it's a uh, we can the time saving money saving hence every company will try to get the bio weaver so dissolution data will sometimes provide the bio weaver justification to get the bio weaver from the regulatory agencies dissolution data sometimes became a surrogate for the in vivo drug release so hence it became a part of iv ivc in vivo data and in vitro data when you correlate you can establish a iv ivc so dissolution is also required for establishing the iv ivc for a drug product but as i mentioned for the post approval changes dissolution is required to get the confirmation there is no change in the product quality sometimes the product is having coating etc so dissolution having the alcohol will provide yes there is a dose dumping is there or not so to induce certain kind of food effect to check the effect of certain surfactant to check the effect of certain biological metabolites or certain endogenous substances food effect alcohol effect we can do with the dissolution testing and also it is a regulatory requirement hence one cannot skip the dissolution testing during the product development so that's why dissolution became an integral part or it's a need for a product development 
so there are when we understood what is the need now how to develop the digitalization methodology so over a way, in an overview we can say there are three kind of different digitalization methodologies are there one is discriminating digitalization method second is bio relevant digitalization and third one is the quality control digitalization the first one the discriminating digitalization medium or methodology which is required to develop those methodology at the beginning of the product development because when you required you need to take trials and trials to match your digitalization profile with the innovator you need to identify such a condition here digitalization methodology means conditions with respect to ph of the medium rpm of the apparatus composition of the medium as well as the volume of the medium various uh, aspects of the digitalization methodology which need to be developed in such a way which will reflect yes the changes which you are making in the product is reflecting in that digitalization profile so hence discriminating methodology or discriminating digitalization medium is required at the beginning of formulation development and optimization in some cases bio bio relevant digitalization medium is required this is also required just to predict or identify what is the in vivo fate of the product. So bioreliving media, here physiological pHs like pH 1.2, 6.8, 4.5, if it is a colonic region, then 7.2. So physiological pHs, as well as there is a composition which will mimic our gastric fluid or intestinal fluid. So hence there are certain simulated gastric fluid mediums are available simulated small intestine fluids are available or sometimes if you require the buccal tablet sublingual tablet or a particular site specific digitalization is required so that composition can also be doubled up like in case of ophthalmic preparation in case of topical preparation so digitalization of the certain products is required to get the bio relevant digitalization media or organ specific digitalization media and the last digitalization method we develop just to check the quality, which is the single point or three point. In case of immediate release tablets or capsules, we have a single point digitalization media. But in case of complex product like control release, etc., we have the three time points quality control digitalization media. So all these three digitalization methodology they have their own significance. They have their own role in the product development. So one by one, we will understand here. In case of discriminating media, what exactly the discriminating digitalization medium? This is the discriminating power. Discriminative power of a digitalization method is the ability of the method to detect the changes in the product performance and generally demo demonstrated by determining the effect of deliberate change. Suppose here we can understand if I have changed the API characteristic, like change in the particle size of the API. If I have changed the manufacturing process, like I have changed the hardness from the earlier it is 100 Newton and now it is 200 Newton, or I have changed the granulation process, like earlier it was the RMG, now it is FPT based, or sometimes there is change in the stability condition. So these all are what deliberated changes are there. If a dissolution medium which is not reflecting the changes which you made in the product, it means what? the digitalization medium is not able to reflect the changes which you made it means even your 100 newton hardness is there or 200 newton hardness is there there is no change in the drug release it means it is giving the false results so if there is a change in the process you are not able to identify there is a change in process or not ideally if you make any change okay that should be reflected in that medium so discriminating medium is developed at the beginning which will say whatever the changes you are making in the change in the binder concentration, change in the hardness, change in the disintegration, disintegrating concentration, it will reflect in the drug release. Then only one can able to match the dissolution with the innovator. So for that, initially we develop a product like we take the innovator product, then we try to find out whether our product is or taking a trials this is matching with the innovator or not if 
a product or digitalization method or medium is showing 100% drug release in 10 minutes, like in this slide. In, in this medium, if you see, within the 10 minutes, 100% drug is released. So after any making changes, if the resolution is very fast, so formula will not able to identify really there is an impact of particle size there or not, really there is impact of hardness is there or not. So it's confusing. So we need to develop such a resolution media where it is showing the reflection of the changes. It means what? It is a slow releasing or having a, you can easily identify what is the changes between the 15 minutes and 30 minutes. Then if there is a change, you can easily identify, yes, formulation is showing the impact or dissolution medium is showing the impact of the particle size or hardness. So that kind of methodology is called the discriminating dissolution medium. It is required at the beginning of the product development so that the formulator can optimize the product developed as per the innovators. Another medium is what? Bio-relevant dissolution medium. So it's a virtually the same as the fluids inside the body and provide a much more accurate picture of how the drugs and their formulations are likely to dissolve in vivo. In vivo condition, we have different kind of salt. We have mild salt. We have different pHs. There is a food effect. There is a uh, no food effect because sometimes if you have seen the physicians will prescribe the uh, drugs or delivery systems or form of medicine you take before meal or after meal. It means what there is a definitely there is a food effect on a certain drugs absorption. So there is an impact how to identify that. So there is a bio relevant dissolution mediums are there. So one has to perform the optimized formulation in bio relevant dissolution media to predict how it will behave inside the body. They represent the free fat and the fasted conditions of the gastric and intestinal condition. Also help to identify the bioavailability. It also helps to identify the to achieve the IBIVC. So sometimes if it is reflected, yes, there is a food effect. So definitely the there is a recommendation for the product take the before meal or after meal. Suppose there is an effect of milk is there. Sometimes it is recommended take with milk or without milk. Sometimes there is effect of certain kind of, uh, uh, we can say food or sometimes uh, alcohol. So it is recommended do not take along with alcohol, do not take along with the milk, do not take with alcohol uh, uh, along with a certain specific high fat meal or kind of the carb meal. This media reflects the changes in the pH and bile concentration osmolarity also after the meal intake therefore have a different composition that type of company media so researchers develop that medium and there is a, a lot of literature are available to develop a such a medium like five state state simulated gastric food medium is there in that there is various enzymes as well as the salt etc the composition is well known so after optimization one can go or during the optimization one can check the drug release in certain bioreliable digitalization media fat state which is reflecting the after meal kind of condition and sometimes it's a fasted state simulated in small intestine or some, sometimes fat state so they have the difference in the ph they have difference in the osmolarity, they have uh, difference in the sodium torocolate, which is 3 mm here, 15 mm. So what is impact of those components on the drug release will be reflected only only in the bio-relevant digitalization media. If someone has done simple any aqueous media or physiological based pH like pH 1.0 or 6.8, so still there is a ambiguity or confusion or there is a chances of the failure of the bio study because one is not knowing about what is the in vivo fate or what is the drug release in presence of the wild salt or not. So that will be reflected when you perform a dissolution in bioreliant medium. Further, this bioreliant medium is widely useful or this very useful for IVIVC development. So in IVIVC, there is a two inputs are required. There is an in vitro input and in vivo input. So in vivo input is from the bioestility or the PK samples are there. 
at different time point what is the plasma drug concentrations are there and in vivo input there is a drug release so one has to get the better correlation a required a thorough understanding about the in vitro data so in vitro release data in ph 1.2 4.5 6.8 and especially the bioreleven media from generated those in vivo data in vitro data will correlate with the in vivo data then identify which dissolution medium is reflecting the most correlate the most appropriate correlation with the in vivo data that medium will be selected as a surrogate for the dissolution media surrogate dissolution medium is what if you make any change in the formulation and again check the drug release in that selected medium you will see if there is an impact you can correlate yes if there is change in the dissolution media is happening it means it may change the in vivo performance it may change the pharmacokinetic profile it may change the drug concentration onset of action c max t max etc so dissolution medium can be a surrogate for the bioequivalence testing so before going for the bioequivalence testing the dissolution medium which is developed from the ibivc will save the cost will save the failure of the uh, bio study so and sometimes a robust ibivc will provide the bio waiver also if you say we we have developed this product with ibivc the regulatory agency will say okay if it is developed in with ibivc definitely if you make any changes you need not to do further bioequivalence testing so that is also one can get the bio waiver so what we understood so far the significance of the dissolution medium or dissolution methodology and second different type of dissolution methodology which are the quality control bioequivalent and the distributing medium and which methodology is required at which stage we have discussed now next is the development of the dissolution medium so prior or before starting the dissolution medium selection methodology selection one should know about the what is the drug solubility what is the drug solubility based on that one can determine whether the sink condition is maintained in that selected medium or not without sink condition if there is a saturation is happening it will give a false results or the drug release sink condition is well known it means what a drug should have the more than three times of the solubility suppose if paracetamol i am taking it's a 500 mg drug is there and the particular medium it is soluble in 300 ml so i need to take the three times of that saturation solubility so if a 500 mg is completely soluble in 300 ml i need to take three times means 900 ml it may be similar in other cases a drug is having 100 mg dose which is soluble in 100 ml then i need to take minimum of the 300 ml if i take 500 ml or 1 liter it's okay so minimum i need to have the 300 ml then also one need to take the considerations of the what is the stability of that uh, drug in that particular ph sometimes without checking the stability of the drug we select it and we are not able to find out where the drug has gone because when you check the drug release you find always it is 30% and 40% only there is no 100% drug release like if you say example uh, omeprazole or certain proton pump inhibitors they are prone to degrade in acidic ph so if you conduct the drug release in 1.2 ph you will not be able to get only the 20 30% drug release is only there rest of the drug is degraded which are not able to identify in the your quantification of the method so that is also required to identify such a medium in that drug should be stable drug should be soluble and provide the sink condition in some time the dissolution media also based on the what is the bcs class of the drug bcs class one drug is there which is highly soluble then irrespective of the ph etc any medium you can take it because the drug is highly soluble in all the phs if you say bcs class two drugs then definitely you need to select a proper dissolution medium which is having the providing the sink condition sometimes based on doses form and formulation if your formulation is nanoparticles if your formulation is the topical preparation if your formulation is a tablet capsules so type of dissolution mediums is required to be different so based on the drug solubility sink conditions drug stability bcs classification and doses form 
that these factors are governing for selection of a suitable dissolution medium. So based on the selected dissolution medium, what we see in the dissolution methodology, there is a need of dissolution media, its composition, then selection of the apparatus, like it's a type 1, type 2, or mass gate, paddle kind of thing. What should be the agitation speed or rotation? 50 RPM or 100 RPM? What should be the medium? 500 ml, 900 ml, 200, 10 liters. It's based on the what kind of methodology. If you are selecting type uh, flow through cell apparatus or type 4 apparatus, maybe the 6 liter, maybe it's okay. But when you take the type 1 and type 2 apparatus, 1 liter or 2 liter maximum assemblies are there. And also, sometimes there is a need to, if a sink condition is not achieving and required to add certain kind of surfactant, then there is a need to have certain data which provide the selection of a suitable surfactant which improve the wettability, which improve the drug solubility. So various methods are available. If you see the USP, uh, and there is a type 1 that is a basket apparatus, pedal apparatus, reciprocating cylinder, flow through cell, pedal over this, rotating cylinders, reciprocating cylinders. So now type 1 to type 6 are mostly widely used for different kind of doses form. Especially for tablet and capsules, type 1 and type 2 widely used. And right now, the certain microsphere, microparticles, beads, small tablets, etc. So flow through cell is widely used nowadays. Then for certain task double pack, etc., pedal over disc or rotating cylinder is widely used for such kind of thing. So once you have selected the dissolution methodology like medium, composition, then apparatus, then RPM, now you will be able to perform the dissolution study. So you will insert your formulation in the particular apparatus and there is a rotating speed is there and it will give you agitation and the scientist or you can select the sample at different time intervals. The selected time points, selected time at selected time points, the selected collected samples will be analyzed with the suitable method, whether it is UV, HPLC, or etc. And from that, you can identify what is the drug release in a particular time interval. And from that, you can find out the way the, you can plot the graph that is the uh, cumulative percentage drug release versus time profile. And from that, you can fit to the various model. So why this model is required? Just to identify or to predict the methodology, predict the uh, rate of dissolution, predict the dissolution rate constant. Because if dissolution rate constant is uh, you can say uniform throughout the stability testing or throughout the uh, various batches, you can say, yeah, it will behave in the same, in the same manner. So we fit the uh, data to various model dependent and model independent approaches. So for the model dependent, we have zero order kinetic model, first order, Higuchi, Grossman, Pepas, Weibull, Banker, uh, Lonsley, Hobenberg. I'm not going detail because these are the well reported. There is certain softwares are available through this all we can do through Excel sheet also. Only we need to have a kind of a uh, cumulative drug release versus time profile. And with the mathematic modeling, we can generate the dissolution rate constant. We can generate the diffusion coefficient or the dissolution rate coefficient. And also we can find out what is the T50, T90 of the drug release. We can easily identify. Certain are model independent approaches, which is mean dissolution time, mean residual time, T50, T80, similarity factor or dissimilarity factor, which is F1 and F2. And certain statistical models are available, which again reflect what is the drug release behavior. So this model dependent and model independent approaches are just to interpret your dissolution data. So generating the data and interpreting data is not a critical thing. What is important is what your input in the dissolution. If your dissolution method selection is wrong, it means what this data is no value. So these are the softwares, etc. They are helping to interpret your data. But as a scientist, you need to work on the selection of the dissolution medium, development of the dissolution methodology, which will provide the more accurate data. Then interpretation fitting the various models. It's a kind of a layman work. Simply you put the data, software will provide what is the uh, different information about the data. 
So these are the math mathematical model the equations are there, which is well known. So mean digital time or F1 value, which is a similarity factor, uh, F1, this is this similarity factor, F2 similarity factor. So they have range like uh, this similarity factor 0 to 15 and similarity factor F2 value should be more than 50 uh, or 50 to 100 per 100. So overall, I can say the summary what we understood because uh, with the time constraint, it is 30 minutes. So here I'm concluding the overall what we understood here. So dissolution is a uh, methodology to be selected for the candidate formulations. And it's identify, it's also helping identify the various critical manufacturing variables. So impact of blender, binder effect, effect of mixing effect, Generation procedures, coating parameters, excipient impact on the dissolution. So dissolution became a, a quality control tool uh, to identify which are the critical variables for the product. Then dissolution will help in the formulation optimization and to decide the quality control for that. It also estimates the food effects and uh, food effects on the bioavailability. Dissolution also helps to establish the IVIVC, which further provides the uh, bio waiver dissolution also help to develop a surrogate dissolution medium which help to get the IVIC as well as to provide the bio waiver in case of super uh, super conditions so sometimes based on the bcs class of the drug based on dissolution data we can uh, request for the bio waiver or we can provide justification to get the bio waiver from the regulatory agencies so overall it's a quality control uh, tool for the product development so this is whole summary dissolution is not a simple drug release put your tablet into the dissolution medium or any apparatus there is a science behind that dissolution okay we need to develop a suitable dissolution methodology which can reflect the product performance so that is whole summary about the uh, today's talk in the 30 minutes just to sensitize you all to work on dissolution methodology in during the product development so no any medium can be suitable for any kind of resist form so it's a required a thought process during the development of dissolution methodology that's all from my side if you have any questions uh, i'll uh, be happy to answer that thank you so much Thank you so much, sir, uh, for providing us a uh, lighting talk on the challenging topic in the pharmaceutical industry that is called dissolution. So dissolution is one of the rate determining steps in the pharmaceutical product as well as the, uh, what we call as a challenging step in the development of analytical method as well as the new process form, new drug approvals, P&D approvals. It is one of the primary requirements in the regulatory also. Right, so, right, exactly. So, sir, sir has provided a connecting link between a dissolution in the product quality testing as well as the quality control parameters and also provide a role of dissolution what is the role of discriminating medium what is the role of bioelevant medium in the dissolution and how can i select a particular drug candidate on the dissolutions how can i select a medium because this is one of the most important step that we need to uh, double the dissolution medium on the basis of drug solubility so this is one of the most important step in the formulating a discriminating test so thank you very much sir, for providing a key valuable information. Thank you, thank you, Dilpreet. Thank you so much. Sir, I, sir, I hand over to. Uh, oh, yes, sir. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Gautam Singh P. G. So from core of my heart, I welcome you as well as the thankful to you for accepting our invitation and deliver a very very specific. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. So welcome, and I hope that in the in future we can do some of the collaborative work and uh, it will be the helpful to the pharmacy fraternity as well as some of our uh, young pharmacists so no doubt i know that uh wits is one of the very popular name in uh, not only in india and in abroad also so i hope that and as and when you are in uh, nearby of this place you can visit this place you're welcome or if you are coming to delhi or like a chandigarh you can give a call to the dr dilpreet singh i will provide the uh, transport facilities from this place. After this, you come to this. Uh, uh, very happy to check it. 
and thank you dr dilip thank you thank you for sir thank you so much nice thank you sir thank you thank you so much and really it's so kind of you like uh, i know your name from my, uh, my college from my bfarm college from lachmi college so i heard that you, you okay, were there professor okay. yeah so that was uh, one i have already that impression of you and uh, it's good to know again reconnect with you through this platform and uh, thank you very much for uh, this inviting me and interacting with the whole uh, scientific community and definitely i'll plan sometimes to come there and uh, we'll have more many more collaborative things together thank you so much for this opportunity thank you. and thank you thank you dilpreet for arranging all this and coordinating this event thank you thank you sir.